Today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, we wish to extend a warm welcome to those who are visiting us on this Memorial Day weekend. To all, we extend a blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Leading us in prayer today is Father Steve, and Deacon John will assist at the altar. My name is Kay Dodson. On this Trinity Sunday, we ponder the goodness of our God, a trinity of persons, and an eternal communion of love that reaches out to us. God first created us and then has redeemed us. In the end, God will welcome us home. Let us begin our worship by singing together the praise of God by raising our voices with the hymn, Holy, 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 found in your program. But first, let us rise to greet one another in the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate this beautiful feast of the Most Holy Trinity. God himself, last week, the feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, week before Jesus ascending to the Father, and now we celebrate this gift of the triune Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we come here to offer sublime worship to Almighty God, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are the word of God made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father. 
Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Through you, we are saved and glorified. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of a fire as you did and live? Or did any good venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs, by wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of the which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must know now and fixed in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on the earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today that you and your children and after you may prosper and that may you have a long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. The people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be His own. Happy are 
the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be His own. Your words, O oh God, are truth indeed. I know your works are ever faithful. You love justice and right, your compassion fills all creation. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be His own. See how the eye of God is watching, ever guarding all who wait in hope to deliver them from death and sustain Exalt you just in the Lord, for praise is the song of the righteous. How happy the people of God, the ones whom God has chosen. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we call Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of revealing to us the gift of your Son, who has revealed to us the gift of the most holy trinity, the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And Lord, we ask for greater clarity, greater knowledge, so that we may grow in our relationship with you. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear what it is you wish us to hear in my voice, to proclaim your praise. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Three points, three points where I'm headed today. Uh, we believe in what? Mystery versus magic and about who? We believe in what? Mystery versus magic and about who? Uh, back in January, I had the, uh, the blessing to travel uh, to a conference, a college conference for uh, Catholic Campus Ministry, what we're doing over at Oakland University. I traveled to St. Louis for a conference with 20,000 college kids and praising the Lord and uh, giving their lives over to Jesus more intensely and intently. And uh, Cab picked me up. The cool kids would know that I took an Uber, but uh, many of us don't even know what that means. I took an Uber, took a cab from the airport to the hotel in downtown St. Louis, and, and uh, my Uber driver was a Muslim, and uh, he recognized right away that I, I wasn't a Muslim, <laughs> and, uh, and he, uh, he was asking what I was in town for, et cetera, et cetera, and I told him what I was there, and and he began just to ridicule me that I believe that Jesus is God, that he's divine. And, uh, and he, he kept saying, Jesus is not God. He is only a prophet. And I said, no, he's not. He is divine. He is the second person of the most holy trinity. He is God incarnate, God in the flesh. No, you believe in three gods. You have to repent. And, uh, and, it's, and, and then he kept saying, the Quran says so, the Quran says so. And I said, I don't believe in the Quran. God has revealed himself to us in a person, and that's Jesus Christ. You have to repent. And it's hard to have a conversation, you know, in those circumstances, et cetera. And, you know, and, and just researching and, and all of that, you know, and what we're experiencing right now with the, with the trauma of what's going on in Jerusalem with the war, all of that aside, we can have that conversation in another time. But the Dome of the Rock, which is on the place of the Temple Mount of the Jewish place of the Temple, the Dome of the Rock, the Muslim mosque there, uh, it sits there and, and there's writing around the outside of the, the mosque uh, and the writing on the outside of the mosque says, say only but the truth about God. The Messiah Jesus is son of Mary. He was only God's messenger. His word that he committed to Mary and a spirit proceeding from him. So believe in God and his messengers. Do not say there are three. Stop it. That's what it says. And so Islam and other religions look at Catholicism. They look at us as Christians and, and they think that we worship three gods. Do you worship three gods? You should be all shaking your head no right now. Do you worship three gods? No. Um, we do not. Our belief is three in one, one in three. God has revealed himself to us in his son, the incarnate word of God, Jesus Christ. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, we have God's fullness of his revelation. That from the very beginning, God was triune. Go back and read Genesis. It says, we created the world. And so we believe what? What? What do we believe? So I just want to look briefly at a few definitions that can help us to understand our Christian belief, our Catholic faith. So the word theology, it, it literally means the study of God. Deacon John and I studied theology in the seminary. Many of us uh, have studied some fields in that way. So it's, it's an academic field that, that 
seeks to try to understand and explain who God is and what he is and what he has done and, and how he relates to, to the world and to man. So theism is any system that believes that God is a force in being related to the universe. Deism. Deism is a system that believes that God created the universe but is no longer actively involved in the world. The creator set things in motion, but the universe is kind of like a top where it's where the creator's spinning it and now he just steps back and allows it to spin on his own. That's deism. We are not deists. Pantheism is a system that believes that, that divinity is everywhere and in everything. We see this all over in the New Age world. They try to find God in trees and worship the, the Mother Earth and those kinds of things. That divinity is everywhere. That the absolute or spiritual reality re exists within all of creation, but not in a divine being, somehow above or separate from the created universe polytheism. Polytheism is a system that believes in multiple gods, several divine beings, possibly interrelated, such as families of gods, Mount Olympus, Greco-Roman mythology. Hinduism is polytheistic. Mormonism actually is pretty polytheistic. Tritheism, believing in the existence of three separate gods, Henotheism is a system that believes that multiple gods exist, but that one's allegiance and worship is due only to one of those multiple gods. Thus, it's polytheistic in, in, in belief, but monotheistic in practice. This is the common practice in the Roman ancient times. They had their own house gods. Monotheism a system that believes that there is only one God and he truly exists. And what other people may call gods or merely or, or, or spirits or angels or demons or idols, human creations, etc. Trinitarian monotheism. The Christian belief that there is only one God and yet this God consists of three distinct inseparable persons. Persons is the key. A trinity expresses the Christian belief, our belief, that God is one in three, three in one. And so in the most holy trinity, we, we see and, and we use the word mystery all the time. It is a mystery. And we hear that a lot. And that doesn't mean magic. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's unknowable. The Holy Trinity is accessible, it is knowable, but at the same time, it's uncomprehensible for our finite human minds. We can't fully grasp it. It doesn't mean that it's unattainable completely, but it is known. It's known by faith and it's known in practice because it's been revealed to us. Either Jesus is God or he's not, Either the Dome of the Rock has the truth written upon it, or it doesn't. And it doesn't, brothers and sisters. Jesus is God, and he has revealed to us the, 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 the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. So my taxi driver that day, <clears throat> and much of the world isn't baptized. By our baptism, the fullness of faith has been revealed to us. And our finite minds, although they're still weak, we can still approach the triune God. And we be, can begin to grasp the unknown. We can begin to grasp these things. Thus, this brings us to my, my third point. We believe what? Mystery versus magic. It's not magic to believe in the Holy Trinity. And about who? Who? That's the point. <clears throat> That's the point of the most Holy Trinity. Every other feast that we celebrate throughout the, the Holy Church's uh, liturgical year, every other feast that we celebrate, every Sunday, in fact, you know, we celebrate what it is that God has done for us. We celebrate Christmas, Jesus being born for us. We celebrate at Easter, how he died and rose from the dead for us. Last week, Pentecost, how God sends us the Holy Spirit. And so here on Trinity Sunday, it's different. We don't celebrate what God has done for us, but we celebrate God himself. We celebrate and we look at who God is. 
It's about the who, who God is in his goodness and in his beauty. What can we say about God? So from the sacred scriptures and from our lived faith, we can say that God is truly good. And this is something that Islam cannot say. They think God is a slave driver of sorts and that they have to be obedient only. We can say that God is good, truly good, and in good in two senses. He's inherently good and in and of himself, and he's incredibly good to me. He's inherently good, objectively good, and he's good to me. He's good to us. God is, is greater than any good that I could possess. He's greater and far greater than any good that I could possess. He's, he's better than any accomplishment I could obtain. If I become you know, a famous actor, if I become an Olympian, if I become a professional rugby player or whatever, you know, I'm thinking off the top of my head here. You know, if I could become something famous or something like that, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. Or if I, if I gain the whole world, if I buy a, an island off of, off of the Pacific because I'm, I'm a trillionaire, all of those things combined equal nothing to God. He is the highest good. St. Thomas Aquinas said that he's the sumum bonum, the sumum bonum, the greatest good, the highest good. And so different from all of these other goods, which in reality, I'm not going to get. I'm, not, I'm, I'm never going to win a gold medal as a, as, a, as a swimmer. I'm never going to be a rugby player. I'm never going to own an island off of, off of the Pacific. But aside from all of those things, I can actually possess, you and I can actually possess the greater good, the highest good, God, the triune God. And I, and, and you and I, we do so per our baptism. We possess him. We are baptized into this divine life, into this mystery. And so God makes himself available to you. He makes himself here, present, out of love. The greatest good lowers himself to have a relationship with you and me, mocked by the world, denied by millions, billions, ridiculed. The triune God stands here today for our sublime worship. What do we believe? We believe that the most holy trinity three in one, one in three, that God has revealed himself to us in his son, and we are Trinitarian monotheists. It is a mystery, not magic, one that we can obtain and attain knowledge and, 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 the, and have comprehension only through our baptism. In all of it, it's about the who. This feast tells us who God is, is that he is the greatest of all goods and he desires a relationship with us. And so here, as we come now to give solemn worship to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, our worship impacts the love that the Father has for us. And he wants to pour it out upon you, your families here now. And so as we fall on our knees, let's remember to pray intently the glory be here at the end of Mass, giving our hearts over to the Lord. Amen. Let us stand now and profess our faith, which proclaims our holy doctrine of the Trinity. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and get in glory to judge the Lord. Trusting confidently in our Heavenly Father, let us beg him now to hear and answer all of our prayers. Let us pray for the church. God, you are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Give us hope that we will not leave us disappointed and pour out your love in our hearts. Bless Pope Francis and all who serve in ministries of the church. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who have died in the service of our country. Loving God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we call to mind those who sacrificed their lives in service to our nation. May their deaths be not in vain, but lead us to true and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for joy in creation. May we behold in wonder, O God, the heavens and the earth, the moon and the stars and all the work of your hands. May we also discover the beauty of every living person made in your image and likeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the sick and suffering. Jesus, you bore in your own body humanity's wounds. Bring healing to our friends, Matthew Veneler, and all who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Let us remember the dead. May the faithful departed come to rejoice in the Trinity's unending love, especially those who died in the service of our country, Peter Grabowski, Beatrice Santi, Mary Thunic, and Tian Corey. And when we pray to the Lord. Let us offer silent prayers from our hearts. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless Father Jim, Father Steve, Father Jeff, and the five newly ordained priests in the Archdiocese of Detroit. Help us all live our baptismal commitment through lives of love and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we are your children, and we come to you this day, and we give you all of our hearts here. We give our solemn worship and love to you, the triune Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we ask it all in Jesus' name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Your 
joy be seen in all I do. Love enough to cover every sin in each thought and deed and attitude. Kindness to the greatest of the least, gentleness that solves the path of peace. Turn my strivings into works of grace, breath of God, show Christ in all I do. Spirit from creation's birth, giving life to all that God has made. Show your power once again on earth, cause your words to hunger for your way. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, your duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in a unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the truth of the eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with them we acclaim with one voice. Thank you. 
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. <clears throat> Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, 
offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servants, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Sins of the world, grant us. 
us peace, grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi. Let us pray. May receiving the sacraments, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Many thanks to everyone who have uh, generously contributed to our CSA uh, this year for so far this kickoff. Um, thus far to date, 111, I'm sorry, more, more like something updated writing on here, more like 200 pledges uh, households have been pledged of over $100,000. If you're already, uh, if you're ready to make your pledge, there are commitment cards available at the welcome desk. And those who make their pledge of any amount are entered to win the Blackstone Yeti. So that's the, uh, that's the incentive prize. I was joking around with some people as they walked in. I said, uh, you're going to sign up and put my name on the ticket, right? And so uh, that's the incentive prize of Blackstone Yeti. Double your chances for winning, increasing level from last year. Following Holy Mass today, we have some of our uh, friends in Marion Hall, friends from the Holy Land, the Abrufa family. Oh, they'll be selling beautiful olive wood carvings and, and speaking with them before Mass too. They said because of the... Uh, Tourism has been shut down in Jerusalem. The, the Christians uh, are the ones who really pour a lot of money into the infrastructure in, in Israel by tourism of all of the holy sites. Uh, many of the Christian people there and much of the, the region itself is struggling financially because no one's able to go there. So your, uh, your uh, support of buying olive wood uh, articles directly from the Holy Land support the Christians back in Israel. Please see the voice or visit our website for more information. Next Sunday, after the 12 noon mass, we're going to have a, uh, a Eucharistic pr a procession. After the 12 noon mass around the perimeter of the church and the campus, all are encouraged to join our special Corpus Christi tradition. And then we have an ice cream social following that. Uh, or you're welcome to come with me at, at 10 a.m. at uh, St. John Fisher, Oakland University. We're going to process all around the campus uh, as we have in the past. And so it'll be a, a great opportunity consecrating the parish grounds here and at Oakland University. Lastly, the parish offices obviously will be closed for Memorial Day, and it gives our par our, a chance for all of our, our families to be together and, uh, and to ce celebrate Memorial Day. Uh, family parishes mass will be celebrated by Father Jim at Christ the Redeemer at, at 9 a.m. on Monday. 9 a.m. on Monday, uh, Christ the Redeemer. And so just a uh, very a special Memorial Day blessing, especially for all of our veterans and all of those who have served our country or anyone who has family members in the country, uh, in, in the armed forces now serving. On this Memorial Day, we thank all of you men and women serving, uh, serving and who have served in the military that protect our country and our freedoms that we enjoy. We thank you for these men and women, O oh Lord, who are willing to give their lives as we remember those who have laid down their life for the cause of freedom. May the example of their sacrifice inspire us to selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Bless the families of all of our fallen troops. Comfort those who grieve those the loss of their loved one and fill them with your strength and your peace and let your healing be their hope in their hearts. Be with all veterans who are current and all who currently serve in our military. Bless them and our families. Grant them loving protection and all who look to you for strength and comfort. And at last, Lord, be let your peace prevail among all nations. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I was talking with a, uh, with a foreign gentleman just recently, uh, explaining to him what Memorial Day was. He was from Colombia, and uh, explaining to him that this is a day in which it's not just about barbecues, not just about getting together with family, and it's going to rain anyway, but not just about just enjoying some nice <laughs> weather, but it really is about, about celebrating our country and recognizing all of the men and women who, uh, who have fought for the freedom that you and I, particularly the freedom of religion. And so certainly a special thanks to all of our veterans. Let's just pray the glory be together in honor of the most holy trinity. Glory be to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.